Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Nobby Whitney and recently I picked up this little baby. The Diana Baby 110 from Lomography. And a few things really jumped out as being quite impressive about the camera. So I thought I'd do a little review on it. First off, it's tiny. Now obviously a lot of 110 cameras are tiny because 110 film is tiny. But this one was based off of its older sister, the Diana Mini, and then the Diana before that. So it really looks like a big camera that's been shrunk down into a small format. And I think that makes it especially cute as a small camera. Let's get on to the more technical side of things. First of all, it has interchangeable lenses, which is quite rare for 110 cameras. It comes with a 24 mm lens, but Lomography offers a 12 mm lens on their website. It also offers multiple exposures. In classic Lomography style, you can just keep on shooting photos until you decide to advance to the next frame. It also has a bulb mode, so along with its fixed shutter of a hundredth of a second, you can also do long exposures. And it has a PC socket for an external flash. You could even set up a full wireless studio situation if you wanted, which I might have done. It's been quite a well-rounded, feature-packed little plastic box. I thought I'd try and put it through its paces. Shoot a little bit of street, a little bit of studio, a little bit of daytime, a little bit of nighttime, some multiple exposures, some long exposures. So this is that. As this camera does have bulb mode, I want to try and take a picture of this gas station here. Because gas stations at night on 110 might be MBD, but there's no tripod mount. So I'm going to try and use this completely round pole here to stabilize the camera for a second. Let's see. Oh. 
So there you go, a little bit of something for everyone in there, I think. Now I shot that on Lomography's Metropolis film, but I won't do a review yet because as the classic saying goes, don't judge a film stock by its 110 format. People do say it. Now before we get into the pros and cons of the camera, a couple of middle of the road comments. So first of all, it is 110 film. That means very small negatives and very low quality images. So just have that in mind going into it because you will not be getting massive printable photos out of it. That's 110 fact. Second thing, quite interestingly, this camera shoots square format, which is a nice nod to its older sisters, the Diana Mini and the Diana, and the Diana Instant, which all shoot square format. However, on those ones you get more shots per roll because of the square format, but that's not the case on 110. And this is not a restriction put in place by nomography at all. This is actually how 110 film works. There's only one sprocket per frame. So it advances to the next full frame, but then it's masked to just a square inside that frame. And you'd have to develop a brand new film stock, especially for this camera to get around that limitation. So just bear in mind that you still only get your 24 shots per roll, even though they're square. Now, pros. I think basically everything I said at the beginning, you know, it is tiny, so you can just throw it in your bag, goes everywhere with you, it's got long exposures, uh, it's got um, interchangeable lenses, and it's got a PC socket, like, pretty cool stuff. Only other pro that I really came across after using it for a week was that the viewfinder has frame lines for both the 24mm and the 12mm lens inside, so you can always see which lens is going to be better for that shot without actually changing the lens, just have a look through the viewfinder and then make a choice. In terms of cons, there were definitely three things that really struck me after using it for a moment. First one would be that there are two backs for the camera. There's one back which is for traveling, I guess. It keeps the moisture out, it keeps the dust out, it completely seals the back of the camera. However, when you want to shoot, you have to take that back off and replace it with a different back which holds the film canister. Now, nitpicking a bit, it's not a big issue, but it does mean that you have two bits of plastic that you have to keep with you all the time, two possibilities of losing something or breaking something, and then you've got to be an issue using your camera anymore. Number two is also maybe a bit of a non-issue for a lot of people, but I think it's worth mentioning, is that it has bulb mode, but it doesn't have a tripod mount or a shutter release cable port, which means if you do want to do long exposures, you have to find a really stable surface to hold your camera onto and you have to hold down the shutter for the duration of your exposure. So it's just something to definitely consider when you want to do bulb mode shots on the camera. Number three, however, I do believe is a big problem. The lens comes off in the same direction that the shutter fires and the shutter is basically attached to the lens. That means that every time you want to change the lens, there's a very good chance that you will accidentally take a photo at the same time. For me, that's quite a glaring design flaw, but there is a way around it, and that's to definitely hold the shutter up while removing the lens. So like a top tip to not accidentally take a bunch of photos. So who is this camera for? Well, if you looked at all those wildly overexposed, super grainy, weirdly colored photos and thought, why would anyone waste their time and money on this? Then it's probably not for you. But if you thought, wow, I love that aesthetic, I love the painterly quality, I like to just have a camera with me and take pictures and enjoy the surprise of what comes out, well then maybe this camera is for you. Most of the time I like my photos to be clinically clean and exactly like I imagined them when I was taking the picture. But sometimes it is fun to do something totally different and not care about it. And honestly, there were some photos in this that I really liked. For example, this one I think came out really nice. This one, as low fi as it is, I think it's a nice shot. And this double exposure, which turned out nothing like I expected it, turned out way cooler than I expected it to. So, you know, it's a bit of fun. And right now, as of making this video, on the Lomography shop, they're selling the camera plus the second lens and a roll of film for the same price as just the camera on its own. I'm not sure why, but 
I'd say definitely take advantage of that while it's there if this is the kind of thing that appeals to you. And there's an airplane going by. <laughs> and that'll do it for this video. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching till the end. Let me know down below what you thought. Do you shoot 110? Did you like those photos? Did you think this was a complete waste of time? Let me know and a little thumbs up as well and a little subscribe as well and maybe share it as you wish and I'll see you in the next video.